for today's cup of coffee. We're hoping that I don't fall out because <laughs> I had a gummy bear binge. It happens when you're diabetic. I don't know, you get these just ridiculous cravings for sugar sometimes. Yeah. So it's, you know, we're going to be discussing, we're continuing the phobia theme. Two of them that they are, they're sort of interrelated, and that is noctophobia, which is fear of night, and then uh, nectophobia, which is fear of the dark. Yes, yeah. two separate things. Yeah. You can huh. see that. Yeah, sort of, yeah. And what, it's does, like, uh, what was the other one? Octophobia? Uh, fear no, of no, no. Uh, well, that might be. That one's, yeah. No, that, no, octophobia is fear of the figure eight. Oh. Uh, I think the other one is octophobia. And what was the one of the sun? We didn't stay with the two we got. That's We've the got, one of I the sun, know. like the daylight. Fear of the light. The We've light got noctophobia today, fear of the night, and then we've got noctophobia, which is fear of the dark. Those are the two we're going to focus on today. That's what I was asking. So what? The light one. Fear of the light. I don't know. I ain't focusing on that one today. Okay. We well, you mentioned both, so why mention both? We're talking about night and dark. Kid has been TikToking lots lately, and it shows. The story is popping off really good. Anyhow, I'm at two, twenty, twenty plus k now. Okay. Followers, yeah. Okay, that's a good thing. It's on TikTok. Fear of the dark and fear of night. And. Those things are very much interrelated because night, unless you've got like a full moon, is one thing. Fear of the dark could be any place. You can be indoors and it'd be dark. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I think some of these are primal fears that we're born with to a degree. Like just That's, instinct? Yeah. Yeah, because we do have um, a lot of predators, predatory animals and stuff like that, wolves. Yeah. Uh, that used to be a huge problem uh, that would come out primarily at night. Mm hmm Anymore, I think it's we have more predators in the day than we do at night. That's just the modern world. Yeah, it's called life. Yeah. It's 24-7 at this point. And, you know... There's also spiritual darkness I want to bring that into also. Because when you can't see, then, you know, you're afraid. And, yeah, and we don't have the, like, for example, cats or dogs, whatever. We don't, we don't have the ability, or any other nocturnal animal, we don't have the ability to see at night. Right. Unless you have those night vision thingies. Yeah. And even then, it's still altered. Mm-hmm. But the to not know, and that is when when you are in darkness, every same thing, everything seems like a threat. Oh yeah, it's, it's it makes things a lot like very spooky. But there are some people that just flat out aren't afraid of the dark. They really aren't. Well, you know, and I think that these are people that are. And are they scared of the dark, or are they scared of what's in the dark? No, I think they're that confident. That they have confidence in their abilities or confidence in God that regardless of what comes at them, they will be able to handle the situation. Mm -hmm. But that's what I'm saying. Most people do not have that. But what are they truly scared of the dark or the night? Or are they scared of what's in the dark? Well, and that's the whole thing about this little mini-series is to face fear, your phobias. Why are you afraid of them? How do you overcome them? Mm -hmm. Now, there is such a thing as caution, you know, as far as if you're out at night. And there's also not just animals, but you can't see where you're walking. That's so, true. you know, that you could stumble and get hurt very easily. Um, one of the oddest uh, situations was in uh, Gatlinburg at the Ripley's Haunted Adventure. Mm -hmm. And there was, I, I mean, it was very... Uh, purposefully dark. Well, yeah, most haunts are. And 
Well, that sets the atmosphere of fear again. It's that primal fear. Right. And what you had to do was you could have these little fiber optic lights that you bought for a nominal fee. <laughs> and you, you would put your shoulder, uh, your hand on the shoulder of the individual in front of you as you walked through the um, little haunted thing there. The haunted house. And the haunt. there was um, one room that was just, it was like SpongeBob. It was, what was it about the darkness? Advanced darkness. Advanced darkness. And it was just thick. I mean, it was it was where you could... Like the air was thick or the no, darkness No, the darkness was, was just thick. And it was very unnerving. Um, and not only that, they had the sound of bees. And then they had fishing line that was suspended from the ceiling. So as you walked through that, you had these strands of something that barely touched you. But with that sound of fe- of bees, oh, that, which is a different phobia. That would freak my ass out because I hate bees. Oh, God, I hate bees. So, you know, and if you really want to understand what you're afraid of, go through one of these really good haunted houses, not one of the little, you know, local fire department ones. Not yeah. saying that some local fire departments don't put on a good haunted house, but some of the professional ones. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the ways that you can find out what truly scares you. Yeah. But that level of darkness, and it's like when we come through that section as as we're coming home, that one area there in the holler, and it is just like it eats the light. It truly is like that, and it's honestly very spooky. Like, (laughs) I don't blame you for just bolt for just running that day that your car broke down or whatever. Well, even the headlights. <laughs> Poor Angie. Even the headlights. There's something that they are dimmer in that little section. They are, which is weird. Than other places. Mm-hmm. Like, it's spooky. Like, it's almost like the darkness does eat the light. Like, right. it really eats the light of the headlights, even when they're on full blast. Right. And it's like, as far as a fear of the night, and this is this is something that kids a lot of times have issues with. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of times why they don't want to go to bed. It's because they're afraid of the dark. Yeah. And what's in the dark, and again, you can't you can't see anything, and then people have a tendency to keep it just, you know, grave silent. Yeah. And when so. it's dark and silent, like, you, even small things in your room, like, you can sort of see them through the darkness, and they look like completely different things. Sure they do. Well, and it's like, everything seems amplified when it's too quiet, everything. Anybody who's ever gone camping and had a mosquito get in their tent. God, that's horrible. Because it's amazing how much noise one small creature can make. And they make noise. Yeah. It's weird whining. Absolutely, it's a weird whining. So it's one of those, I, I like the night. I do. And, you know, kid does not like um, the night quite as much as I do as far as sitting out here on the porch. It gets so spooky sometimes. For, for a while, we've had little string lights and stuff, but those in some ways are worse for me because then your eyes can never fully adjust to the darkness and whatever is out there, you can't see it. That's true, too. So there was there was something very serene about coming out to 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning and sitting and having a cigarette, you know, barring and foreseeing random Sasquatch sitting on the porch smoking <laughs> one, of, one of my cigarette butts, but... <laughs> that didn't happen. Uh, you just think that's Well, it's, I don't want that to happen. And that is when any and everything that you've ever heard, every ghost story, every whatever, can come back to you. Well, there's, like, some nights that I come out here, if I'm just, like, I can't sleep or whatever, I come out here, and I, you hear spooky things sometimes. Yeah. Like, there was one night that I heard something, like, bang against the, their uh, chain fence or whatever, mm-hmm. and it was like, what the heck? Yeah. Well, it's just like the, when they had the people that had, it was a pig that lived in a shed across the road, 
and I came out here one night, and whatever it was hit that shed just full on. And that very well could have been a bear. Mm -hmm. The pig wasn't happy with whatever it was. No. So. It was a Wendigo. It wasn't a Wendigo. Uh, more than likely, it was probably a bear. A bear trying to get to the pig. Uh huh. So it just. I don't know if would it have made it better had I seen that it was a bear going after the pig. I think so, because then you w it wouldn't leave any mystery. It'd be like, oh, okay, that's a bear. But I think that we need mystery in our world because there are some things that we need to be able to ponder, that we need to seek answers for. Right. Uh, we're not supposed to know everything. I think it's a lot of arrogance. Mm -hmm. And what we know today may be disproven tomorrow, some of the things. Right, right, yeah. So that's where we are uh, spiritually in the dark. You know, and I, I've wondered before, as far as people who are blind, uh -huh. uh, because their world is very different. Yeah. And they can't, we can't understand their world that much. I mean, we, we can put, you know, blinders on and different things like that for a period of time. With the knowledge that we can take them off, they can't. Mm-hmm. And so... And I'm sure that's very scary for them at times, too. Well, that's all they've ever known. Yeah. Unless there was somebody who, who lost their sight. Uh-huh. And that would be a terrible thing. Oh, definitely, yeah. But uh, we can't thoroughly understand their world any more than we can thoroughly explain ours. That's, yeah. I wonder what their world would be like. What, what it's like in their, for lack of a better term, eyes. Like... Right. Well, it's interesting because I had met a therapist several years ago, and she was blind. And it was uh, interesting because they did not want her to become a therapist because that she was blind. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of ways, she was more effective because she couldn't judge somebody on their physical appearance. Exactly, and I think that's really good because a lot of people honestly do judge what they can see. Sure. Or what they do see. Well, like I said, it's just because somebody can see with their physical eyes doesn't mean that they're not spiritually blind. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, fear of night, fear of the dark. There's uh, The night has always been a friend. Uh -huh. It's not some, but it has been to me. I think that we have a lot. It's called light pollution. Yeah. Street lamps, different things like that. We see these pictures of people that are away from civilization and that the night sky just is as it is. Things that we can't see because of, you know, where we are, you know, geographically, but because of all the, you know, the lights. Yeah. Because you have to have that night to be able to see the stars. Exactly, yeah. So, you know, be a candle. If you're a Light yourself up in flames. Well, if you're, no, Ellen and I, we're not talking about that, but if you are <laughs> afraid of the dark, you know, it's a matter of trying to find light, trying to find light within, be a light to others in a time of darkness. Mm -hmm. Because we're surrounded by darkness right now. Which is oh, why yeah, we definitely. have so many people in fear. Yeah. Which ain't good. No, because when you are operating in fear mode, you're not able to think rationally, and you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You will do stuff. This is in every horror movie that you that you will ever watch. People doing stupid stuff. Yeah. Why do they do stupid stuff? Because they're in panic mode. Mm-hmm. And then they're not thinking. Exactly, yeah. So I, that's one thing. I'm not not a huge fan of Joe Rogan, but uh, when he was on Fear Factor, mm -hmm. and that was a really cool show. I, I bet that you was a really cool show. ended. I, I bet people ended up having parasites that we that there are not even names for. <laughs> um, yeah, eating the brains and all. Well, you know that stuff's just not kosher. I mean, no. it's, you're not supposed to consume everything. Um, 
but to teach people to control those primal animal urges. Uh huh. So anyhow, don't be afraid of the dark. And if you are afraid of the dark, find out why you're afraid of the dark. Are you really afraid of the dark? Or are you afraid of what might be in the dark? Yeah. So well, just be at peace with the darkness. Well, just to be at it's... peace regardless. Yeah. And that's something for everybody that everybody seems to be struggling with these days. Is... Don't go into it thinking that you're going to get hurt or see something scary. Well, you know, it's just these are dark times. And it is that type of darkness... It doesn't matter whether it's daylight or not. You can feel it. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. it's it can be very unnerving for everybody. Very much. So, if you all uh, would like to comment on the phobias, if are you afraid of the dark? Are you afraid of night? Do you like night? Leave those in the comments below. If you have had experiences with the supernatural, paranormal, encounters with UFOs or aliens... Uh, cryptids such as Bigfoot, Chupacabras, Loch Ness Monster, alternate realities, altered realities with or without substances. Email us all those stories. Oh, haunted objects. Yeah, if you've had any experience yeah. with haunted objects also. And the email is cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com. And you all have a beautiful, blessed day. Bye.